Welcome to the Morning Nerdy News. I'm your host, Gray Falcon. We have updates on AMD's new Zen 3. We have announcements from Microsoft and GameStop. And we have some Unreal Unreal Engine news. So we're going to start off with the GameStop announces multi-year strategic partnership with Microsoft. And this is over on news.microsoft where they officially announced that GameStop is going to be used to go in and sell Microsoft products such as Surface tablets and computers, 365 accounts. You'll be able to go in and purchase your new Xbox console in there and be able to do the payment plan with them where you get the Game Pass Ultimate with that and just hopefully make payments. Doesn't state whether or not payments can actually be made in there, but you can set up the account at no upfront cost with them. We'll see the computers inside of the stores get replaced by the Surface tablets. So it's going to look a lot more like the Microsoft stores used to look before they were all closed down during the pandemic. So this is kind of a replacement without them having to invest the funds in the actual maintenance and maintaining all of those locations. As far as we can tell, GameStop will still sell their other products. You'll still be able to go in and buy video games and other products from them but they are going to have a much larger Microsoft focus now because of this partnership. And other things in regards to Microsoft, Microsoft told employees it plans to release browser-based app for Xbox Game Pass streaming service next year that will get around Apple App Store rules. We absolutely will end up on iOS. So this comes to us from Business Insider, and this isn't surprising. This is something that I expected was going to happen once Luna was announced for uh, Amazon, because that's how they're getting around this with their setup. They've created a web-based setup for this. There's also web-based get-arounds for Stadia, which are created by individual users. That's not even anything that's official from Google, but individual users have gone in, tinkered, and created their own Stadium app in order to actually play Stadia on iOS. So it's not surprising to see that Microsoft is going to follow suit on this. And then we have the information from yesterday during the Ryzen Zen 3 presentation from AMD. And we have the look for all the different games and comparisons according to AMD in this. But so far, I kind of believe what they're saying because they do go out of the way to even show that there is a negative result in Battlefield 5. And most companies wouldn't be willing to show any type of negative in their overall information. But you can see that according to this, they are getting a 21% gain in League of Legends and a 19% gain in CSGO. These are games that are very CPU bound, so you can really see the performance enhancement that occurs with this. You can see down here that they are comparing this to the Core i9-10900K. This is the second from the top tier one that they're showing in this particular slide. Now, there is another one that is up above this, but it is significantly more pricey. The 5900X is gonna set you back $550, where the 5950X, which is their top tier, is going to set you back 800 with this new gen. So a $50 price bump on all of these things from where they had been with the last gen processors. Now, they, they show a comparison on Cinebench. Now, Cinebench is not the end-all, be-all, but it is an excellent benchmark that is used by most people. We're going to have to see more benchmarks, though, to really get a true idea of how this falls. But right now, Cinebench has the highest score for any CPU ever between this one and the 5950X, which then beats this one as it should. But they both break a score of over 600. The 5950X had a score of 640, I believe. And this one was sitting at like 633, 635. So definitely a huge improvement, at least in that one benchmark and according to their own internal data. Now, WCCF Tech came in and did a comparison of Big Navi versus a 3080. But there is a caveat that they say in here that they, on both of these, this comparison is the comparison where it has the Big Navi in red using the new CPU 
and the RTX 3080 is using the 3900. So there's a grain of salt here because the 3080 could see an even larger bump here with the new CPU. Now this was all done at 4K and at 4K CPU is not as much of a factor as it is at things like 1080 simply because of how much information is being rendered. It doesn't have as many frames to push through the CPU currently. But we get a comparison of Gears 5 at 73 versus 78 frames per second. Call of Duty Modern Warfare for 88 versus 101 frames. And then at Borderlands 3, they break even. Not an exact apples to apples, but close. And we'll see where they come in with pricing. So what AMD has done with its CPUs in the past is they've come in and undercut Intel and undercut Intel and undercut Intel until they could surpass Intel. So their whole plan was to give better performance per dollar until they could reach the point of surpassing that. So with their new CPUs, they're coming in and they're now trying to, to compete on quality. They're saying, we're gonna give a slight price increase on these, but you're getting a better quality processor than what we were offering before. So you're gonna have to pay a little bit extra in order to get that. And the big Navi news where it is competing with the 3080 based off of just this little hint we're going to get more information on October 28th in regards to how this is going to do. But if they're coming in here and they are uncut, undercutting the 3080 and they are getting just slightly worse or equal performance at 4K and it's going to be about the same with games at 1080p or 1440, then I would expect that we're going to see a price drop in the 3080 just because if Big Navi comes in here and says, we're not quite better, but we're really close, but we're gonna come in and sell you this card at $500, that's going to force the 3070 to have to drop in price. And that is going to force the 3080 to come down if they really wanna get those sales to be, be even because all of a sudden $700 is going to have to be closer to $600. And that's still going to look like a premium to something that is only giving you know, five frame performance boost to a 13 frame performance boost in games. And in some games, they're breaking even. Now, keep in mind, that's just according to this slide. And as I said, grain of salt, once we get the new processor in there, it's entirely possible that the 3080 all of a sudden has a bigger lead than 13 frames in Modern Warfare. It could all of a sudden be 20, 30 frames, which at that point, kind of does justify the higher price tag, but we're not going to know for sure until we get those actual benchmarks and that availability to everyone. And then lastly in AMD news, AMD is gearing up to acquire Xilinx for $30 billion. Now, if you don't know what Xilinx is, they are a company that produces semiconductors. They are big into the business of 5G. So with all this 5G expansion that's going on throughout the world for faster internet on cellular devices and you know just mobile devices for tethering and other things like that, this is a, a big buy for them to be able to expand, go out and have additional money coming in from uh, perhaps Verizon or T-Mobile or whatever companies choose to purchase this type of equipment from them and have that additional funds come in from something other than computing for home and business. But this also allows them to help compete in enterprise sector as well because of what they produce. Now, this isn't official. This is a, a leak saying that it's expected that they're going to have this announcement coming as soon as next week. And then finally, we have Unreal Engine to be used in cars, starting with a new Hummer EV model. And they are using Unreal Engine for, for the screen. So kind of like when you sit in a Tesla and you have that tablet in the middle, they're doing a similar thing, but it is going to be run by Unreal Engine. And because of this, you're going to be able to choose for your on-screen map to get rid of the default car and you can go and probably purchase Rocket League vehicles to be on your, your center panel for what's actually driving around on the screen. And maybe we're gonna see the Epic Game Store on this as well. So you end up stuck waiting for someone in a parking lot. You'll be able to play Rocket League while you're waiting around or pick up games off the Epic Store and play those. Uh, so we'll find out. We've got, just take a look through here. 
it says Epic Games Lite, so that, that makes me think that we are going to eventually get the ability to play the games rather than just have the vehicle be shown up. It shows Rocket League here, but it doesn't state if that's for gaming or just for the little car replacement. All right, but that's going to be it for today. Thanks for hanging out. Remember to click the follow button if you're watching live on Twitch. If you're over on YouTube, click the follow button and follow me on Twitter as the Gray Falcon. Until next time, have a good one.